Right, so here we have the uh, sample that has been punched. So that's the PDMS chip that's been punched uh, with all the four holes for the four inlets that um, I was using. I'm going to leave that here for, for a second and we come to the last step which is the bonding step. So for that we're going to use uh, this plasma etcher here. So it's a small unit and the first thing we need to do is to turn it on. So we turn on uh, the main power, we make sure that the gas valve is closed and that the power is at 100%. So the first step here is to turn on the ventilation which is this uh, green button here and this is to release the vacuum. So we just uh, keep a hold with our hand here to remove the lid. And you can turn on, turn off the ventilation as well. So we take out this uh, plate and on this plate we're gonna put the uh, PDMS chip and uh, the substrate that we use for the bonding. So this is going to be the final substrate that we're gonna use in the experiment. So for the sake of this demonstration, I will use again a, a standard glass slide also for the, the chip substrate. So um, uh, in an actual experiment, this might be, for example, a piece of silicon wafer or maybe a glass cover slip, which is uh, perhaps more useful in actually doing imaging through in a microscope through uh, an objective lens. So um, again, we have to go through a cleaning step for the glass slide. So I'm going to take this one uh, straight out of the box. So for the sake of this demonstration, I will just uh, do a quick rinse with acetone and isopropanol, the same that we did uh, with the very first step, the cleaning step in the, in the processing for the SU8 uh, spin coating. Uh, but if you want to do it a little bit more thoroughly, uh, you would use, uh, again, a sonicator um, and sonicate it maybe for five minutes uh, in acetone and isopropanol each. So here I'm gonna just quickly rinse it with um, acetone on both sides and this is to remove some kind of basic organic contaminants and uh, particularly dust as well which is a, a big enemy of this process. So I'm going to rinse it both sides with acetone and isopropanol and I'm going to blow dry it with the air gun here. I'm just going to quickly blow dry it on both sides. place that on the uh, aluminium plate and I'm ready to uh, pick up the chip uh, that I punched earlier on and now with the side uh, so the side with the tape uh, I've left the tape on uh, which also helps it to protect from dust uh, while you're handling it before you're ready to do the bonding so I'm gonna leave the channel side facing up and I'm gonna attach the other one uh, just lean it on the uh, piece of aluminum plate. The PDMS itself is a little bit sticky uh, as a surface which actually is helpful in this case because you can tap it gently with your fingers. Uh, don't worry about damaging the channels with your fingers because you will probably not do that. Um, and you can, I can just gently attach it to the aluminum plate and I can peel off the tape and the chip should stay in place. So now we just do a very quick uh, additional cleaning step which is just done with some fresh tape where we just take the tape and we tap it a few times on the side of the channels. So we're just gonna do it a couple of times and this helps us get rid of any uh, dust which might have settled um, onto the sample while we're handling the sample itself or uh, during the cutting process. So this is just to try and get rid of any um, last specks of dust. I'm gonna just shift this over to the center of the plate and I'm gonna take the plate and slide it inside the plasma etcher. We slide it in and now uh, close the door. We hold the port closed and then I press the pump button at the bottom. And this is going to start the vacuum pump which will evacuate the chamber. So this will also keep the door closed. And we now leave it to pump so there is no pressure gauge uh, for this unit but after approximately two to three minutes um, it should be ready uh, to, to run the process. So we just now uh, leave it here to pump for about two minutes. Okay, so here we go. The, uh, the pump has been um, pumping for about two minutes now. So we are now ready to let the gas in. So the, the chamber is evacuated. 
Uh, so we have a good vacuum going on in the machine right now. And the next step is to open the gas valve. So we're going to use uh, a normal atmospheric plasma. So we're just going to slowly open the gas valve. And we're aiming for roughly one normal liter per hour. And so you see that as you open the valve, the, the dial will gradually drop in the position. So you need to keep adjusting it over about a minute or so or maybe a little bit less, so you get a relatively stable um, flow of gas within the chamber. So uh, right now there's an interplay between the pump pumping and the, uh, the gas needle valve letting um, air in. So it's a, it's a dynamic equilibrium of, of uh, pressure, so we need to reach the equilibrium first, so we need to leave uh, the valve open and uh, regulate the, the pressure to, to a stable value uh, while the pump is running uh, all the time. Okay, so we will leave it for about a minute to two minutes uh, until we see that the valve is in a stable position and then we are ready to turn on the plasma. So this is now a relatively stable uh, condition for, for our purposes and we are ready to turn on the plasma. So the next step is then to turn on the generator and uh, once we hit the generator button we are expecting to see the plasma turn on and the way that you will notice is that the uh, the chamber will start to glow in a purple color so if we get the pressure settings right uh, then we're going to get this glow inside the chamber if we don't get this glow once we press the generator button then we have to tweak slightly the uh, the flow uh, with the needle valve until we see the the purple glow so once, if, if the plasma turns on, we're going to keep it on for about 15 seconds. So I'm going to start the timer um, on my phone here. So I'm going to start the timer for about 15 seconds once the generator is on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to turn on the generator and let's keep an eye on the, uh, uh, on the chamber of the plasma etcher. And there we go. So this is the uh, plasma that we're looking for. I'm going to start the timer and I'm going to look at 15 seconds approximately. Um, for the process to complete. Here we go, we're at 10 seconds in. And 15 seconds. So now I can turn off the generator, I can turn off the pump, and I can close the valve for the gas and turn on the ventilation to remove the samples. And the final bonding step is now to take out the plate, peel off the piece of PDMS. So make sure you don't drop it at this point, so handle it very carefully. And you want to line it up with your substrate, lean it on and then gently tap it all the way around. So you want to tap it very gently because if your channels are very thin, you risk uh, collapsing the channels and if you press too hard. And then you can look against a bright light and if you see any local spots which have not bonded and you see any bubbles, you can use uh, one finger on one side of the glass slide um, to, to push against and uh, you can gently tap it uh, with your other hand. And this will get you a relatively even adhesion throughout the whole sample. So this is it, this is now bonded. Remember that this bond is now permanent. So if the process works correctly, you only have one shot at the positioning of the PDMS, so don't expect to put it on the sample and adjust the position, because if it works well, it's a covalent bond uh, forming a silicon-oxygen-silicon bridge between uh, the PDMS and the glass substrate. So it is going to be a permanent bond and you will not be able to remove it. So keep that in mind. And things that can go wrong in this step are uh, potentially surface contamination that can happen both on the glass and on the PDMS. So maybe you contaminated the surface uh, of the PDMS while you were handling it with your gloves or with your fingers. Uh, so that can locally induce um, a contamination of the surface and because the whole process is very sensitive to the chemistry of the surface, uh, it might fail uh, to, to bind in that particular position. So if you have adhesion problems uh, before uh, troubleshooting the whole process, um, just do it a few times to check if, it's, if, if the issue is consistent. But generally speaking, the, um, um, the process should work well, uh, as it has in this case.